So in this week's update from IHME, uh, we see that the global epidemic is really not improving uh, at all. And we, like last week, there's really four key centers of um, ongoing transmission. First and, and foremost on, on the list of concerns for us is what's unfolding throughout South Asia. Uh, really rapid increases in Bangladesh, uh, in Pakistan, in India, very widespread in India. We're seeing rapid increases in states such as Delhi, where seroprevalence surveys suggest 65 to 70 percent have already been infected. This makes us quite uh, convinced that the outbreak in South Asia is driven by a so-called escape variant. That is a variant where previous infection uh, doesn't necessarily protect you from the, the new variants, the escape variants, and where vaccines are likely to be less effective, particularly the AstraZeneca vaccine. So uh, the, the outbreak in India it continues to increase very rapidly. Uh, and I think we will uh, expect that to continue growing for quite some time. Uh, the second area is the ongoing P1 epidemic in Brazil. Uh, new data was released from the state of Sao Paulo this last week on sequencing, and that suggests that P1 had spread into Sao Paulo much earlier than we the, the data had previously suggested. So making the case that the, the general outbreak in Brazil is, is uh, throughout the country, not just in the north of the country, is driven by the P1 variant. And uh, for those looking at the numbers, the seeming flattening of case numbers in the last few days uh, around Easter is likely a data artifact. We see that in Europe, some places with higher vaccination rates like the United Kingdom, uh, have actually seen, have got the, the B117 outbreak under control. So that holds out the prospect that further increases in vaccination in Europe, uh, as long as mask use doesn't drop too much, uh, will really be the strategy. Now, we do see in the vaccine confidence data that in Eastern Europe, particularly, uh, that vaccine confidence is very low. So there are countries where less than 50% of people are willing to be vaccinated. And these are the same countries that have high mobility and low mask use. So there is a prospect for B117 to continue expanding in those settings. Uh, although for the region overall, we expect by the early May, uh, daily deaths uh, should start to go down. And then the last area of focus or concern is Canada and the United States. Uh, we're seeing uh, the largest outbreak in Michigan. And uh, that, that surge is really very impressive. The numbers are shooting up. We're finally seeing deaths start to creep up as well as uh, cases and hospitalizations. Cases have gone up 500% in a month uh, and there's no end in sight so far. The challenging part for Michigan for us is that the increase there is not easily explained. It, it, there's a lot of B117 in Michigan, but mask use and mobility aren't, aren't unusual in Michigan. And there's more B117, at least according to the data in Maryland, but we have a much bigger surge in Michigan. So uh, the only way we can put all this together is to expect that the sequencing data is sort of out of sync in Michigan and perhaps B117 showed up there sooner. There's more transmission. Uh, if not, there's some other factor that's going on in Michigan. Now we're seeing upticks in Ontario and Quebec as well across the border from Michigan. Uh, and we're starting to see bigger increases in transmission in adjacent states like Minnesota as well. So there is a cluster of increasing transmission in that part of Canada and the US. Uh, clearly, everybody's watching that very closely. Is this a marker of what may happen in other parts of the country? Overall, for the country, though, it's really this balance between uh, the scale up of vaccination how much, how many people were infected in the past, which is probably somewhere 20 to 25%, uh, and the how, how quickly do people reopen? 
as to whether the variant spread of B117 will tip us into a Michigan-like surge everywhere or what our reference scenario suggests that things won't be that bad and we will start to see numbers start to go down in May. Now it's very easy and our worst scenario demonstrates that to see death numbers rising into June with only slightly lower mask use and slightly increased mobility. So we're on that knife edge around transmission where small changes can shift us to an R effective below one or make an R effective over one, which really puts enormous importance on people staying cautious, uh, not taking risks in terms of transmission, trying to get vaccinated as, as soon as possible when, when they're eligible. Um, and hopefully we will win that race uh, in terms of uh, this spring surge.